Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Nongon and I've never been really good at anything. I finally one day said enough is enough and using the power of the internet and a little help from my friends, I decided to learn how to do stuff. And you can too. In today's episode, we're going to travel the world again. This is part two of international travel. As uh, you may have noticed from my first international travel video, when I had finished making that, we had already booked plane tickets to Ireland. So Mimi and I just got back from a week in Ireland with an embedded day in Scotland, more on that later. We learned quite a few more things on our way to becoming intrepid travelers, and I figured I'd share them with you. So uh, enjoy the next few minutes of pictures randomly from our trip. I put some location titles on there so you know where we went and what we did. Uh, but I'm mostly going to stick to uh, some more things that we learned and some more tips if you want to do this. Again, remember, we are not rich and famous. We are just regular office people with regular office salaries. Uh, you can do this on a budget and uh, you can definitely do this yourself. So as you may remember from my first international travel video, we broke down our tips into four categories. We called them the four F's of international travel. That was forethought, finance, flexibility, and fun. And I've got four new tips for you, one in each category. So uh, <laughs> that worked out pretty well, especially if you're making a video. My first tip has to do with the first F, which is forethought planning. And it is this, never underestimate the power of a direct flight. We booked this trip because we learned that there were direct flights from Cleveland to Dublin. And uh, we really couldn't pass that up. Uh, so we had one flight there and one flight back. Can't even stress enough how much that added to our trip's enjoyment, not having to sit in airports, not having to worry about gates and making connecting flights and clearing customs in weird airports and all that kind of stuff. In that vein, I've got a couple of uh, tools for you. One is a website called flightsfrom.com and I'll put a link to it in the description. Basically how this works is uh, you have a map of the world with every airport in the world on it and you click on that map and it will show you all of the flights that leave from that airport and where they go. You actually can link and book these flights directly from here, which is kind of cool, but it is a great starting point for planning uh, flight times and routes and where you'd want to go. Also, don't forget nearby airports or even airports that are further away. We're about six hours from Charlotte, which is a major hub for one of the airlines. We're about two hours from Detroit and we're about seven from the three airports in New York. And between those three, we could get to probably three quarters of the world without making a changeover. And uh, that just appeal. That sounds so cool. I can't wait to do it. We, we did the one direct flight and I'm definitely ready for another one. So trust me, not having to spend 12 hours in an airport. Very, very cool. So that brings us to our second tip, which is uh, deals with the finance. And uh, this one involves loyalty programs. We were kind of neophytes on this. We'd never really been out of the country, um, but there are loyalty programs. And if you're gonna do this quite a bit or even a moderate amount, uh, the benefits can be pretty amazing. The first would be of course, frequent flyer programs and uh, travel credit cards, which I'm not gonna talk about either because we don't have them. And I haven't learned enough about them yet to be intelligent about them. One thing I will say though, is that certain credit cards offer a benefit that is uh, worldwide uh, car rental liability protection. And I'm not even kidding, like these places will charge you hundreds and hundreds of dollars for liability insurance and you get it for free with certain credit cards. So if you're going to travel internationally and rent cars, like definitely that benefit alone will pay for itself very quickly. The two things that I want to talk about are actual car rentals I joined, and uh, hotels. Um, I joined Hertz, number one club gold as well. And again, none of these are like paid promotions or anything. These are just things that, that we found. So you may find better ones. The reason I did that is after Central America, if you watch the video, Avis really did us dirty in Guatemala. And so I'll probably never rent from them again. I also learned that between Avis and Hertz, uh, they cover and their subsidiaries and sister companies, they cover like 90% of the rental car market. So I figured if I'm never renting from Avis again, I'm probably going to be renting from Hertz a lot. So I went ahead and joined their club. You get some discounts and you also get some upgrades. But uh, the other big benefit is that you skip the line. There's like a little separate line for number one club gold members. And when you get off an airplane after being up all night, that is a pretty decent benefit. It didn't even cost anything to join. So um, just check that out. That's just something to keep in mind. As for the booking, the hotels, uh, Mimi has been booking most of our hotels through booking.com. And um, they've got like a loyalty program where you, the more nights you book, the more deals you get. 
the thing is, if you do like 20 nights in a year, you get lifetime platinum or lifetime gold or whatever. And, uh, you know, wouldn't think that would be a big deal, but uh, we save between 10 and 20% every time we book. We are also eligible for uh, free upgrades and stuff. We went to four hotels on this trip and we ended up in four suites and got these awesome, awesome upgrades that we didn't even ask for. Uh, in Kilkenny, for example, we got this, uh, one of the two rooms that have a balcony that overlook the castle. That's the view from our, our hotel room. Again, we didn't ask for it. It was just part of that loyalty program. So definitely look into that for stays. All right, so this brings us to our third F, which falls under the flexibility part of the four Fs. And uh, before I get into my tip, I wanna give you one that comes directly from me. And uh, this is like a little mini, like a little bonus tip. And uh, she knows what she's doing, so you should listen to her. And her tip is, when it comes to flexibility, don't be afraid to cancel something that you thought was gonna be really cool. This happened twice on our trip, uh, prominently. One was in Kilkenny. They have a medieval museum along the medieval mile. And by the time we were ready to go there, she felt that she had gotten enough medieval museum from the castle itself. So rather than tour uh, what is basically the same information twice, she said, nah, I'm good. Well, we'll just do something else. The something else we ended up doing was uh, a Keitler's Inn, a 700 year old pub where they had Irish folk music. And uh, we had the energy and the time to have that experience instead. And it turned out to be one of the highlights of the trip. So flexibility, right? So that's, that's Mimi's quick tip. As for my tip, uh, I'm going to call this Tripception. And this is, I think, I've been waiting this whole video to talk about this. I'm wearing the shirt from this. So when we were booking the trip to Ireland, we noticed that you could get ferries from Belfast to Scotland. And, you know, I want to, of course, check off all the countries on the list at some point. And I was like, huh, it sounds like really fun. You know, and the only problem with that is that ferries are expensive. They take a couple hours each way. And this one particular one drops you off in like a place that you, there's nothing to do. You can't even rent a car and get anywhere from there. Closest golf course is like an hour up by bus. It's just, just very inconvenient. And so what we'd end up doing is spending all day on a boat just to say we've been to Scotland with no actual good experience. And we racked our brain over this for a couple of weeks trying to figure out how to solve this problem, whether we should just skip it, whatever we wanted to do. And I came up with this crazy idea that I talked her into doing. We booked a commuter flight from Belfast to Edinburgh, Scotland. We got there at like seven o'clock in the morning, rented a second car while we still had our first rental car parked at the Belfast airport. Drove about an hour and a half north to St. Andrews and toured St. Andrews, ate lunch there, drove back to the airport, got back on the airplane, and were home by back in Belfast at the same hotel by like five o'clock that night. In my first video, I mentioned the four things I think about when I think of Scotland, which is golf, kilts, haggis, and scotch, whiskey. And uh, in the like five hours that we were in that country, we went to the birthplace of golf, the place where they invented the sport 800 years ago and have continued to play ever since. We were able to walk on the course because it is public ground and take pictures on one of the hallowed grounds of a sport that I love. We were escorted on our tour by an ancient Scotsman wearing a kilt. When, and after the tour, we stopped at Old Tom Morris Bar and Grill for lunch where I got a pour of scotch whiskey that is only available at St. Andrew's Golf Course. You can't get it anywhere else in the world. And of course, for an appetizer, we had haggis with turnips and potatoes. So in like five hours, we got all four of those. Plus I got to drive an electric car and hit the gas and it went really fast and that was cool. Also it was short, so we were able to return it and I never had to worry about finding a place to plug it in. So awesome trip, highlight of my trip. It required a little bit of flexibility and a lot of conversation to determine that, that was really what we wanted to do because of all the flights that we didn't want to be taking. Um, but I think all in all, it turned out for the best. So don't be afraid to do something weird like that. So that brings us to our fourth tip, which has to do with the fourth F, which is fun. And I've been thinking a lot about this after the two international trips, and I've been going a lot of other places with Mimi over the years. I feel so happy that I've got a life partner that uh, loves these things as much as I do that really enjoys this. We really travel well together. Even though I enjoy going to Ireland, 
I don't think I could have experienced it nearly as well without seeing it through her eyes. We had a moment, I mean, there was a lot of moments on this trip that were overwhelming, but we took this little like 10 person fishing boat out on a tour in Dublin on our last day on the trip. And we, it was, it was okay. I mean, there were some people and some things and we saw some birds and there was a puffin and going, going back in, uh, there was a little seal with his head sticking up out of the water. And I happened to be watching her instead of the seal. I happened to be watching her when she saw the seal and seeing the surprise and joy on her face as it dawned on her what she was looking at. That was worth the plane ticket alone. Despite all the other great things that we saw and experienced, uh, seeing that joy through her eyes just made all the difference to me. And so Mimi, I know you're watching this. I appreciate your partnership and your support going through all of this. And uh, it really does make the experience exponential when I get to share it with you. Um, as for you guys out there watching this, again, if you can find common ground with even like a family member or a friend or whatever and experience these things together, it is absolutely phenomenal. We've got some friends and some family members that have like bucket list places they want to go. And uh, we're really starting to consider taking them there. Just even if it's not a big deal to us, just to watch them experience it and have that memory forever. So if you can, I definitely urge you to do it. Uh, again, a little bit of planning and a couple of tips from recent experts in international travel uh, may help you get where you want to go. Uh, we're going to go on to the next one. I know where Mimi's going next, um, but I'm not sure where I'm going to go next. I think we're going to take separate trips this time and see what happens. Uh, I will, of course, be here to document it for you and come up with some new tips. So uh, just stay tuned for that. And of course, I'm open to learn anything new. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, stay bad, people. Non-gone is gone.